And then when persecution comes and I can no longer even preach openly, I sit there and weep over the great opportunities I had when there was still freedom and I didn't take them. A friend of mine one time got up in church in Peru in, in the middle of the war and he said, if not now, when? If not you, who? And what he was talking about, how long will you delay before you decide something's got to be done? Now again, I, I don't want anyone running out of here and say, yeah, get all excited about this. This has to be led of the Lord. But men, rise up. Something has to be done. If not here, then go somewhere else. But something has to be done. Now, I want to talk to you today for, for a moment about something that is very, very important. And I want us to go to the book of Mark. Chapter 1. Verse 32, when evening came after the sun had set, they began bringing to him all who were ill and those who were demon possessed and the whole city had gathered at the door and he healed many who were ill with various diseases and cast out many demons and he was not permitting the demons to speak because they knew who he was in the early morning while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house and went away to a secluded place and was praying there. Simon and his companions searched for him. They found him and said to him, Everyone is looking for you. Now, I want you just to think for a moment about what's going on here. This is preceded by the calling of the fishermen. And then on down from there, the casting out of a demon. And then in verse 29... It says, and immediately after they uh, came out of the synagogue, they came into the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was lying sick with a fever. And immediately they spoke to Jesus about her. And he came to her and raised her up, taking her by the hand. And the fever left her and she waited on them. What we see in the book of Mark, literally, and I tell, I tell young ministers this, if you read the book of Mark correctly, you will be wore out. You will be breathing hard. I mean, literally. I found myself one day doing that. I was reading the book of Mark. This was years ago. And I was like, <laughs> why? Because Mark uses the word immediately so many times. And what he's doing is he's giving you snapshots of Jesus. I mean, Jesus is over here teaching. He's here casting out a demon in the synagogue. He's here healing. He's here teaching. He's here feeding. I mean, it's, it just goes on just constantly. And in a sense, that was the life of Christ during His three-year ministry. It's just like when you finish preaching, like last night, and a person comes up to you and says, I, real, I know you're probably wore out, but I I've got a question. And then they talk to you for 15 minutes and then as soon as you, you get ready to get up out of the seat, another person comes and goes, I know you're really tired, but i got a question. And then, and then it just goes on and on and on and on. And then you, you realize, i got to get up in the morning. Okay, i got to get up. i got to go teach. You need to teach. Are you going to come here? You see, it just everything pulling at him. And then he goes into the house. You know, I've been thinking, okay, I'm in the house now. And then someone's sick. Well, would you take care of this too? I mean, it goes on and on. And then we get to 32. And when evening came, after the sun had set, they began bringing to him all who were ill and those who were demon possessed. And the whole city had gathered at the door. And he healed many who were ill with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he was not permitting the demons to speak because they knew who he was. Now, I want you to understand something. Jesus Christ was God in the flesh. But Jesus Christ was man. And he did these things as a man. The perfect man in the power of the Holy Spirit. And when he did things, the Bible said virtue went out from him. Strength went out from him. 
I don't know if you've ever done this, but it, but it's true. A man who ministers according to his gifts in the power of the Holy Spirit, when he is finished, his body is absolutely exhausted. Virtue goes out from him. Strength goes out from him. It's like a woman who's in a car and she's driving and the car turns completely over. We've all heard these stories. The car turns completely over. The baby's trapped inside. The car's on fire. And a little woman about this big runs over to the car door. Her baby's inside and she rips the door off the hinges. But the next day, her arms, the muscles are almost tore apart. That adrenaline flowing through her gave her such strength. She just rips the door off the hinges. It's the same way when a man of God or a woman of God is ministering in the power of the Holy Spirit, there is something like that that happens to the body. It can wear you out. And I can see here with the person of the Christ, Jesus, the man, ministering in the power of the Holy Spirit, constantly people coming upon Him and He is wore out. You see, you can't understand these things if you only think of Him as God and you don't realize He was God who became man and ministered and walked on this earth as man filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, It says here that when evening came after sun had set. Now, the sun in Israel doesn't set at the same time it does here. It didn't set at midnight. It sat, set sometime probably around 6. So right after, around 6 o'clock, after a full day of ministry, people start coming in. They start coming in. They start coming in. Now... We have the, you know, a lot of people's perception or concept, their, their idea of the Exodus doesn't come from the Bible, but from Cecil B. DeMille's Ten Commandments movie. Most of us, our ideas of, of the ministry of Jesus comes from films about Jesus, you know, television, Hollywood, make-believe things. You know, we picture Jesus just kind of slowly walking through and touching people and Everything just kind of blessed, you know. Listen, I've got a good idea of what's going on here. Living in Peru, we were one time up in the mountains and there were, there were over a thousand people gathered. Mountain men, mountain women. Suffering in many, many ways. No doctor anywhere. None of them ever have an opportunity to see a doctor or get medicine or anything else. And I had brought with me a dear friend of mine who was a medical doctor. Now he didn't have surgery facilities. He didn't have a lot of medicine. He just had some ointments and some, some antibiotics and other things. When they discovered that there was a doctor in the vicinity. They went wild. Now these were good people. People who loved the Lord. But they stood in line. All day and all night. They didn't think the doctor needs to sleep. Because they had a child that was sick. And this was their one opportunity to maybe see a doctor. Day and night for three days. They clamored at the door. My brother, Mike Martin, he couldn't even get sleep. He was wore out and he kept telling them, I don't have anything but some ointment and some antibiotics. I can't heal you. They didn't care. They didn't listen. And it wasn't because they were bad. They were driven by need. Pray to God that you're never driven that way. So when Christ was here, they, 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 were, they were at the door and they weren't satisfied. Many of them were demanding and yelling hey, because they were desperate, because they had only one hope and here He is. And I can guarantee you that what started at around 6 o'clock in the evening didn't come to an end at 10 or 11 or 12. 
As a matter of fact, when you get down here and it says in verse um, 35, and early in the morning while it was still dark, what does that mean? It seems like Jesus didn't sleep. Because He ministered to these people all throughout the night, and now while it is still dark, He makes His way out. And it almost has, to me, it almost has to seem supernatural that He was able to do that. How did He get through all those people? Now, you and I, no human being, can sustain a life of every day ministering this way. So I'm not trying to tell you you need to minister day and night. What I am telling you is this. 